dead. All I know is this violates every canon of respectable broadcasting. How are you? Hey, who wants to help me get this corner out of here? I need some muscle over here. You are listening to Blame Your Brother. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Welcome to another episode of Blame Your Brother. This is episode 29. We are so proud to be bringing episode 29 to you, the people. Hey, you're going to have fun tonight on Blame Your Brother. Now, there's three of us that bring you the show every week. I am one third of that power trio. I am David. I am known as Nick Nickum, that man, the voice of the people, Mr. 40%. And I am joined every week by the man to the left of me. Mr. Snowflake himself, Lee Brewington. People call me Happy Pants from time to time. That's it? That's what you're going with? That's what I'm going with. All right. And then I'm joined with the man to the right of me in all aspects is Mr. John Tortorello himself. Hey, I'm John, a.k.a. Tico, a.k.a. Mr. PTI, a.k.a. the wild man. Madman. Madman? Yeah. I'll be wild man, too. They got John Tortorella, a madman. Mad man. They do a madman. Okay, he's a madman. There we go. Yeah, there's three of us, so we will be talking to you all night. Got a lot of topics we want to talk about tonight. It's going to be fun. We are live on YouTube, so if you want to go on YouTube.com slash Blame Your Brother, you can join us. There's video behind us. If you're on YouTube, check it out. Get in the chat room. Talk with us. We have a blast doing that. So YouTube.com slash Blame Your Brother every Thursday night at 8 p.m., but it's also a podcast, which you can get on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, tune in every Friday morning. If you want to go on iTunes, subscribe to the show. Leave us a five-star rating and review. That helps us out, guys, and, you know, pushes up to the iTunes top of the top of the thing there. And, you know, occasionally crazy things are going on in the show, so we love that as well. But, hey, uh, also check us out every Thursday at Radio Vegas Rocks. That's Radio Vegas Rocks. If you go to RadioVegas.rocks, they stream our show. You can check it out there. They have a ton of other great podcasts as well. So please go check those guys out. They've been, we've been with them since episode one. We love the website. We love those guys. Jay, he's awesome. So Radio Vegas Rocks, don't forget it. And also go to BYBpod.com. That's our website. You can buy shirts there, purchase things through Amazon, help our show out. Check out all the past episodes, all kinds of fun things. I think I got it all there. That's yeah, good. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we start every episode with retractions and apologies. And Lee told me he has some type of apology to offer. Yeah, yeah. I've been catching a little heat on the Twitter for not being cool, for being a little too crazy. Um, so, you know, just got to apologize for that. I think, um, I don't know. It's like, um, you know, sometimes you get a little passionate about things. Things get a little heated. You know, there's one thing on this show that we appreciate, and it's an opinion, I feel like. So it's never anything personal. Like, if you like if you like uh, potatoes, and wait, if you like tomatoes, and I like, I don't know where I'm going with that. I actually. don't, what are, you, what are you talking I don't, about? I'm just right rambling now. at this point. What is going on right now? I don't now? even know. I don't po- even know. I'm like trying to turn over a new, new leaf, are you so a, it's really difficult. Well, that will not last five minutes. <laughs> um, I, you know, a real, so I don't, Lee's apologizing for bringing his opinions i don't know what that's about we got a ton of people in the chat we got sammy saying he buys all of his porn on amazon do that sports show we got uh, robin sammy and we got brianna tonight in the chat it's her first night here so hello she's awesome she's on twitter we'll talk about her later i'm sure and there you go so join us all right so i've got a uh, an apology of sorts you know we posted the episode and we usually get some pretty good feedback and melissa is one of our followers and she did kind of give us a compliment she said these guys bring it 100 every week which is good i mean that's Hondo. that means we're bringing we're bringing it you know 100 every week but uh she did call me out when i said last week we were talking about the new england patriots players that are not showing up to the white house for political reasons you know and i gushed about tom brady the entire episode uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> let me make a note of this right and, now uh, what? I, do, I do have to bring up the fact that i I did not mention that Tom Brady did not go to the White House when Obama was there when they won the Super Bowl against the Seahawks. He did dodge the White House. So it was kind of bad for me not to bring it up, get on my high horse and say, you know, these players, they ought to be ashamed of themselves. Hey, Tom Brady did it. Then they can do it as well. I'm turning a new <laughs> leaf here. If Tom, That's if the, the standard. If, if That's the, great, the gold leaf. If the great Tom Brady didn't want to show up to shake Obama's hand, who's making jokes on him about Deflategate, and these six players, they don't have to show up either. 
kind of. I mean, really, Tom Brady gets a pass, not the rest of them, but he did dodge it. I want to bring it up. And um, one listener went in. If you look at uh, episode 28 and posted a lot of comments about the video, what was it? What's her name? Copper Top. Copper Top. And go check that out. Too much to address here, but she definitely called me out on a few things. And that's well, fine. Well deserved, too. I'm well used deserved. to it. I, it's not a big deal. You know. we, we need more people to keep David check. Yeah, I think the world is starting to turn around a little bit, man. No, I think got, all the protests are actually, you know, it's it's starting to be a little effective. Nah, 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 you know? nah, I don't think it's so. It's starting to come out. No, I've got a bunch of crazy opinions. We know this. I, I wouldn't call them crazy. I would call them facts of life. I've started to make a list, actually. I think I'm going to write a book about Dave's way we should live our life, okay? and uh, The way we should live don't our call lives. Major key alert. So, major key. <laughs> the first rule I would have is individual bathrooms in all businesses and offices throughout the world. I, I what do you mean by individual? Like? I should not have to see another person, hear another person, interact with another person when I'm using the bathroom. I think this is unacceptable. Okay, well, let me throw something out here. Okay, go ahead. In, like Europe, it's more common to have floor to ceiling stalls. Is no. that acceptable? No. It's individual single bathrooms. But for that's everybody. gonna be so expensive. That's well, gonna be anti business. This, this is like true. think of all the sinks and plumbing and equipment that you have to install and then I don't care. This is my world we're living in. So individual bathroom mandates. Number two, we would ban all pit bulls in America. Oh wow, that's gonna be all a very unpopular bulls. opinion. Oh, well, boy. I, I, I don't care. I don't really <laughs> Here care. we go. But then also what do you do with the existing ones? Oh, you put them down. What? No, not, you can't say that. <laughs> Dave does not speak. He for doesn't the mean that. He does. He when he says that, it's a joke. No, people. because I saw another dog attack this week in the news. They're killing kids. Ninety percent of all dog attacks fatalities are from pit bulls and Rottweilers in America. I've done the research. I've put in the time. This is unacceptable. Okay. Anyway, this is I my. I think those are made up numbers, but that's just me. Oh, no. No, no. You can look it up. I know. I know it's not popular. I don't care. I'm not here for popularity contest. Okay. This is my. But another thing I'm <laughs> this for. This is how you should live your life. Th- another thing. I, mystery, wait, you're a libertarian, right? Let's just. Uh, well, this is if I was president and dictator of the United oh, okay. States. Okay. This is These you be, as a dictator. Yes, this would be my rules for the yeah. country. Um, but I've also stated I don't like to wear shorts out in public. I don't think you should wear shorts unless. You are playing a sport, you're cutting your grass, or you're working on something. I don't think like going to social functions, men in this country should be wearing shorts. I just think it's wrong. Now, you guys knocked me for this until I was watching a show called Little Big Shots the other night, and there was an eight-year-old kid on there. He's like a... Who, pro- who is the host of the show? Steve Harvey, my so man. So Steve Harvey... My man. ...is hosting Steve a show. Steve Harvey, my man. And he dropped some knowledge yeah. on a little kid, and so you, I'm gonna you play enjoyed this, it. I want to play this clip okay. from Let's, Little Big this should Shots be good. about shorts. Listen and enjoy. About style for a minute. What, what, what do you love about style? Give me some rules you got. You got any rules? Like when you go outside, how do you go out? Pants and a button down. <laughs> Pants and a button down? Yep. All the time? Pretty much. Do you wear shorts outside? No. My man. My man. Yeah. Man, people have been talking to me about Steve. I never see you in shorts. I, you know, I just, when I go outside, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a slack kind of guy. Me too. A slack. There you go. In case so, you, not so a slap, but shorts a slack. Shorts banned from adults. No more. Not not in social settings. So that's, Why? Why can I not wear shorts? I mean, in my world, you can't. You can wear them in, in the United States currently, but if I take over, this will be banned. So these are just the ways of Dave's world. This is the world I will shape, and this is how it will be, okay? So just, I'm putting it out there. I'm writing these down. So when these come out in a book one day, you can all say you heard them on Blame Your Brother before they blew up. Before they took over, we knew David's way. We embraced it. We accepted it. It was the best, okay? All right, so February is Black History Month. Speaking of my man, Steve Harvey, how, even though you want to slightly put the man down, he's made a success in America. He hosts many shows, and he's doing his thing. He does a radio show. He does a game show. He's doing little big shots. He's doing Miss Universe. You're knocking the man like he's nothing, but he's built himself up as a businessman, an entrepreneur, He's a brand, okay? You can hate the man. But anyway, it's Black History Month, and Lee's going to give us a fact about a random, important black man in America. Go. Frederick Douglass is the person we're talking about today. Okay. He was born February 1818, died February 20, 1895. But actually, he was an escaped slave. But to me, the most important fact was he was the first African-American nominated for vice president of the United States as running my mate and vice president, pr- 
price presidential nominee at Victoria Woodhall of the Equal Rights Party ticket. I think that's amazing. Here's a great quote by Frederick Douglass. I'm going to jump on your thing here. All right, jump on it. You know me. You know I'm an agitator. Always constantly pushing. This is what the show's built on. We're, we're giving each other's opinions. We're coming strong. You know, it's all in love, but it's all seriousness as well. Frederick Douglass, great quote. Those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation are people who want crops without plowing the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the roar of its many waters. The struggle may be a moral one or it may be a physical one or it may be both, but it must be a struggle. He's saying agitate, 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 push. So there you go. Amen, well, brother. I love Frederick. Okay. He's, he's my man. Amen. So agitation. If you can't, if you can't sit down with a man at a table that you disagree with and have a spirited debate, get out of this country. You got to go. What? You got to get I mean, out of here. I don't know if that necessarily go. always. A, I think yeah. there's a difference between one's, agi- one's got to go. go. <laughs> one's got to go. I think there's a line where agitation crosses and it's no longer dinner, well, dinner party. I, like agitation is one thing, but that's true. Like, I mean, you know, robbing you of freedom is another, right? Freedom. You speak of freedom. It's just another word for nothing left to lose, according to Janice Joplin. But let's get on to the topics of today's Turn show. Bobby McGee. Yeah. Now, let's go up with the first story here. This is a story in Nashville, Tennessee. And we talk about libertarian ways. We talk about freedom. We talk about what is right, what is wrong. We've addressed this on the show before. Is it acceptable to wear clothing with explicit language on it is it cool to you know have neck tattoos all these things we talk about this is a story out of nashville a nashville man was cited like for an obscene. obscene bumper sticker now we've all seen the stick stick figure families we've all seen i had them on my car for a while and they're cute i mean I they're bet, fine some people did. hate them some people did. love them whatever it's, it's your opinion it's however you want to look at it but this nashville man was actually cited for a stick figure of a guy uh, simulating sex with a woman <laughs> from behind. What was it? Simulating? I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> I've looked up the image. It's on our Twitter page. Um, and it says, making my family is what's underneath. Well, the, you can uh, kind of see it. It's a blurred out on yeah, the website. I, I don't understand why it's blurred out. I, well, it's news for. I don't understand either. But anyway, so this guy was cited for a ticket. An officer pulled this man over. And gave this guy a ticket for having a stick figure of two figures engaged in a sexual act. I'm just going to open the floor. Who shall start with John? What should this man be allowed to have this on his car, or should he have been cited? Well, the thing is, the 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 picture. I don't. I really don't know why it's blurred out. It doesn't depict any uh, anything. Sex, yeah. yeah, it doesn't actually depict it. It's just one's leaning over and he's standing behind. Right. Her. And the guy said in the video, if you watch it. He said, and I'll, we'll put the link up. He said, basically, if 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 it didn't say making my family, you might p- think these people are dancing. Now, this guy is quite a character if you watch the video. Um, so he but, he may be teaching her how to bowl. I mean, he might. It could be <laughs> many things. <laughs> um, no, I'm, he's making his family. He's making a family though. With yeah. with the text, it's a little bit different. It, it with the text, you kind of understand what's going on. So. Lee, what are your opinions of, if you can get up, you almost had on the screen there, what are your opinions? Of, should this man be driving around town? Do you, is this acceptable for for people to drive around with this in, in a county? Well, first off, city? you can actually do much worse bumper stickers as mm-hmm. you, as you see on mm-hmm. the screen. Um, so only, th- uh, uh, you know, so the, the citation, <laughs> the citation was for $50. Okay. And he's like, I really don't understand why. I was pulled over. Right. I was sleeping and my, he knows exactly why he was pulled over and he's using an excuse. Like I was sleeping and my brother put a sticker on my car. Come on. That's lame. That's a, that's a lie. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, he, he was well aware. According to him, his brother put it on there and he was unaware of it. And he decided he wasn't going to take it off because he didn't really feel there was anything wrong with it. Do you, ex- is this acceptable? Was the question. I've been hassled by cops <clears throat> for bumper stickers on my car. I've been hassled by old. other people because of bumper stickers on my car. Back before. up. What are you talking I, about? I hadn't right heard okay. this story. <laughs> yeah, what so is one, this? when I was in college, I had a taking care of business, which is Elvis Presley, right? I'd went to Graceland and I'd gotten this sticker, I believe. And it was clear. And I put it over my stoplight my tail light in the like the middle of the car okay. like you have you have three tail lights right yeah, yeah the, the left one, and right in yeah. the one so it was kind of like it was clear so you could still see the stoplight 
So I was bumping down the street in my Kia listening to Eminem (laughs) really loudly. (laughs) Okay. And a cop pulled me over and he was mad. He was really mad. And he made me, he made me take it off. He didn't. Now what's, hold on. So the sticker was just, what did you say it was again? It was taking care of business. It wasn't the problem. That's with it? The, it wasn't the problem with the bumper sticker. So it wasn't it was the, the location. Sticker. Okay. Of it. Yeah. Okay. So that's so. how you got hassled by the man. Yeah. He like was like, "Who's whose car is this? Poor guy. Who's we need sticker? it. You take uh-huh. that sticker. Like he was like yelling me down, and I was like, "What? It's just a bumper sticker, man. It's we like, need a, we need a new holiday for the <laughs> for the snowflakes. The, the snowflakes. The, the snowflakes the, are being hassled the, by the, the man. He, they're keeping him down." All right. Well, um, I, you know what I think? I mean, is this in, in poor, poor taste? Uh, I also was once at a military base and got hassled by my friends because I had one of those bumper stickers that have the Darwin fish. Yeah. Swallowing. No, you weren't. Yes. <laughs> is this factual? Yes. They were going to beat me up. Oh, well, you're in the so- you're in mm, South. I mm, mean, that happens. Yeah. So I, I do was eye opening. I mean, I. I'll go back to the F you hat the guy was wearing in my kid's karate class. I mean, keep it classy, people. I mean, I don't think it should be. I don't think we should have mandates on what. I mean, there obviously is a mandate for it. I mean, it's the police would not clarify what obscene was when asked by the reporter. So that's a bit of a problem for me right there. I mean, you, yeah. you got to have some guidelines. Of, Otherwise, it's just somebody's opinion. Right. And so that's that's not. And yeah, they were, that's not acceptable, right? And they were like, "Well, we just, we just, we just, we just take it to the people, and we take it to the court, and let the courts decide." But by arrest, by citing this man with a ticket, you are obviously giving a judicial perspective on what you think obscenity is. Now, is this the worst thing I've ever seen? I mean, if you had a bumper sticker on your car that was like "F you," I mean, could you be arrested for that? You know, I mean, who knows? I, I don't know, but apparently so. Now, they've only cited like six people in five years, so it's not like it happens every day, but I just, is it classless? Yes. I mean, I wonder it, what, what the, what's the penalty? Does it just make them take it off? It's or? a $50, $50 fine. $50 fine, and you have to remove it within six months. So, I mean, he, he could. To me, to me if, if they, they should give you the option, of, if you want to take it off right there on the spot, yeah. that you shouldn't be able to be fined. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't know. This guy seemed like a bit of a... I'm sure. I mean, just judging. I'm not judging the guy, but he was. Uh, he was on the lower echelon of the uh, of the nations of. If you don't know what that is, he he was a white man that was on the lower side of uh, society. Let's just put it like that. And obviously, like Lee said, he knew this was offensive. Obviously, like it's not like it should have been a big shocker to him. But I don't just keep it classy, people. Like, so what are you saying? Fine him or not? No, I, I don't. I don't believe in finding them for things like that. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, and like Sammy says in the chat, I mean, what about people with porn playing on the screens while driving down the remote down, uh, down the road? What, what have you ever seen this? Uh, yeah, it's. By I mean, who? I've seen stories about it. I don't have You've to say I've seen stories. it. I've, I've seen I've, it. I've, He's followed them. <laughs> I followed him for. Um, no, I've, I've actually never seen it, but I have seen stories on the news where people have been cited that, for that as been well. Multiple right uh, so. reports. It, so they got cited. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, come on. Well, like, in Tennessee, it is illegal. I mean. It's literally against the law, which I, mean, I know you guys are really big by the book kind of guys. I mean, uh, wait, what's what? illegal? The porn on the. Yeah. Yeah, of course. No, no, no. The bumper sticker. How is it legal, though? I mean, it's that Nashville, just Tennessee has a law about. It uh, says if you have a law, it says making in the family and it's stick figures, then that's against the law. It's obs- to have obscene or offensive bumper yes, stickers, but, but they, window but signs the or markings on cars. Since that, 2011, they even stiffened it. Yeah, but. but that, that's the thing is well, what, what, what regulates Okay, right it? there. But what is obscene? Channel 4 reached out to Metro Police who said they don't make the laws. They simply enforce them. Ultimately, the courts will have to interpret whether that law applies to the situation, which to me, the police officer has said this is obscene by issuing the citation. Well, right? no, no, no. That's only the court of law. The court of law can throw out the ticket. Well, it's, but you're still at the hassle of going to court. You have to show up. You know, you have to pay court costs if you're found guilty. This this is, you know, a lot of this is money grab. Well, you could say that about any crime. You could be like, I just want to sell drugs, man, and it's a hassle if I get caught. You know, I just want to well, I just want to prostitute, there's no, there's but no, it's such a hassle. There's no opinion that comes into that. You're either selling drugs or you're not. 
and that's that's clearly against the law. Right. That. I mean, who's to say if I we what if you had a GI Joe bumper sticker on the back of your car and all that? That cartoon has fighting in it, and it's I, I find it a, a, a offense to that. Hey, man, that's the kind of world we live in. It could happen. You're right. It so could, you so you I support mean, it? Yes or no? No, right? I don't support. it. Okay, you're against it, John. Oh, I'm I'm against okay, it. So we're all against it. So yeah. I mean, we're all agreeing on the same thing. I, mean, I don't even know what we're arguing about here. I just say I don't think it should be illegal, but I think we as people have a responsibility to. Just be, show be some more class. respectful. I yeah. mean, be that's respectful. not going to happen, man. That's like, like you always say, like my ideas are pie in the sky, right? Oh, you living in a utopia? It's like you're saying this, like you just be classy, be classy, people. Well, I be don't, classy, I don't think San you should Diego. cite the guy. I mean, you're going to just have to deal with this. I mean, you can't shield your children from everything. So what in the if world. it, what if it just had like giant f u, you know, spelled out the word? I mean, I don't think you should be cited for it. I, but you know, I think that's just. Come on. Well, so is there a line that you draw? What if it had like people being decapitated or uh, pornography? Let's I mean, say. Uh, you know, like pornography. full frontal. So there is. So you can make a distinction. What is obscene or offensive? Yes, yeah, you can. As, as said in the Supreme Court one time, they asked him what pornography, what was what was obscene? And they said, I don't know. I can't define it, but I know it if I saw it, you know, which I guess. Well, we there do you get the go. Courts. You saw a okay, stick well, figure. So would you pardon the man if you're the judge or not? What do you do? You're Judge Bruin. I think I love what John said. If the guy removes the bumper sticker, do okay, do that's do your warning. Welcome to the people's But if court. you if you if if we'll all go out at the courtyard and if your car's there and the bumper still stick on it, you pay the fifty dollars and you had to take the sticker off. Do 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 it's the honorable Judge Lee Happy Pants Brewington. He said his plans was just to take off the making my family part. Oh, there you go. They're just dancing. They're just dancing, so man. They're, just, They're dancing. just dancing. They're having a good time. Well, the Baptist might have problems with that. Hey, sp- hey speaking of having a good time, <laughs> we didn't even talk about we hung out with a listener of the show, friend of the show, Sammy, this past weekend. We went to his uh birthday party in Rivergate and we had a we had a blast doing it. Uh two of us did. John over here did not. He was in Pigeon Forge or something. Yeah. Okay. Well Yeehaw, Pigeon Forge. So we had a good time. We hadn't seen Sammy in ooh oh, well, 15, fifteen years. Fifteen, sixteen years. Well, I I worked with him, so I'm trying to think. I mean, yeah, it was probably about that though. But we well, had then, a, uh, if you worked with him, you've seen him the soonest. Yeah, for sure. Um so we had a good time. We went out to Rivergate, and then me, Lee, and Brandon, Lee's buddy, we went and ended up at a bar in, like, where was that at? Like, Harding Place area. Met some true characters at this bar. Uh, An old man who was a heroin addict who fought in Vietnam, who killed a man, killed a man. Oh, no. uh, Served 10 years in prison and came out and was going to possibly... um, kill or harm a uh, Indian market up the street that he felt was overcharging him for cigarettes and beer. So, uh, it, <laughs> that's the de- de- definitely qualifies for that kind of punishment. Yeah. So if you, uh, if you hear about that, uh, you know, where you go, you heard it here first on uh, blame your brother. That was Lee's buddy. There's a picture of him and Lee and him were holding court out on the streets of Nashville, man. They, that was your boy, wasn't it? No, definitely not. Uh, I thought he was actually going to go get a gun or something from his car. He might there have. for a second. He was popping some pills or something. I don't know what he was doing. But anyway, um, also, then we went to a hookah bar. We had a blast. Uh, listened to some rap tunes. I didn't. I mean, it's kind of weird when you enter other cultures. And I mean, really, I guess, you know, what I've always said, if we all knew someone of a different background, of a different culture, it would definitely change the way we see the world but a lot of us are just trapped in our own bubble so we we don't i mean we people in iowa or people in the middle america where it's 99 percent white i mean of course they're going to see the world as as a white person you know but if you could go you know to other cultures get to know those people i, I do think it fundamentally changes the way you see the world i think it's why there's a difference between our generation the generation before and us and even this generation coming up who's exposed to more groups of people than we were you know um but we, i had a black blast at this hookah bar and it's kind of funny just seeing these these uh like middle eastern ladies like really into rap knowing all the words to these old school rap songs they were having a good time and i had a black i loved i mean we all used to go to hookah quite a bit and i always enjoyed it you know i Never had any problems there, and everybody's cool, and I like it. I like being in different environments and, and seeing the world. So, so that was a fun time. It was a it was a good Friday night, and our uh, our Lyft driver was quite a character. At one point, he was blasting rap tunes like <laughs> what like levels of eleven? Would you say yeah. our second Lyft driver? He was off the chain. Like he had the windows down. Like he was hitting <laughs> his brakes. He had like strobe lights in the back going off. It was uh, it was a good time. So, you know, it's fun to have that. 
All right, speaking of obscenity, we're going to jump over to uh, what are your thoughts on Playboy? <laughs> When's the last time you looked at a Playboy, would you say honestly, like the the magazine? Um, probably like 12 years. Wow. Um, so you knew, I don't know if you knew or not, but Playboy had abandoned its nudity policy earlier this year. Did what do you, you mean? Know? No more nudity? No more nudity in the magazine. I did not know that. So that was going to be their new their new way of doing things would be no nudity in the magazine. Well, guess what? Uh, that lasted for a couple months, and now Playboy is bringing back nudity a year after pledging to stop publishing naked pictorials. Um, so in this day and age of the Internet and everything's available, does Playboy have a shot at all? I mean, do they have a shot? Like, is this publication going to be dead in another year? Like, who is buying these Playboys? That would be my first. Do you know anyone that would you say would buy a Playboy seriously? Are you talking about the Playboy with nudity yes. or the Playboy without nudity? Well, Probably either. Without, obviously, no one was buying it because they stopped doing it. But with nudity, who who are these people? Like, in I, I think mean, there's lots of people that'll buy a Playboy if it has nudity in it. Do you think and so? And they, they do things to boost their sales. They'll get like certain celebrities to do exclusive first nudities. And when they do that, the sales go out the roof. Are you kidding? Okay. I just, it's it's a foreign concept to me. I have actually, I went out to a comic con earlier this year and actually bought a, a Playboy with uh, Donald Trump on the cover before he was president. He was on the cover with uh, whoever his wife was at the time. I don't know who it was. Probably his second wife, I think. So anyways, I bought that, but I didn't open it. I also got a Sable Playboy in wrestling frame, uh, wrestling fame and a China Playboy, I think, somewhere. But they're all they're all sealed up. They're not worth anything. Sealed just, up, like where your kids can get them and stuff? No, that, sealed up where they're like sealed, where kids can't get like to Like resined? Them. You know, they come sealed up, right? They come sealed up. Yeah, like they're... I no, mean, I don't. I know nothing about Playboy. John, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, the plastics. If if you if you open it, everyone knows it's been open. Let's yeah, put it that way. So anyway, so Playboy. I mean, do you have any problems? Let's get to this because I'm Mister Misogyny on the show. Lee, do you have a problem with Playboy, the publication? I don't know, man. It's a weird world we live in. I mean, I suppose like. If the own, I don't know, man. It's what do weird. you mean you don't know? It's a it's a hard problem. Have a, have because, a take. Well, you know, in some instances, you want to be like, yeah, it's it's horrible that women are exploited, but a lot of the times they like want to be like they are part of the exploitation. You know. So is this is this feminine power or is this male objectivity? Like, which one is it more of? I think it's definitely more male objectivity, without a doubt. Especially if you look at who owns the magazine. If it was like an all woman one run magazine, maybe that would make more sense because at least, you know, that's like their profit, you know, at least they're using their looks to make money. But the way it stands now, I mean, I'm sure some people probably get a good deal with Playboy, especially if they do the exclusives. Right. But like your typical Playboy bunny is not probably honestly making anywhere near the amount of money hmm. that Hugh Hefner and his son is. I'm sure. I I mean, so, John, what are your thoughts? Is Playboy, I mean, is it the devil or what? What is it? I mean, my, my thing is, is if it's not Playboy, I mean, there's a lot more racier stuff out there. Um, I'm kind of with you on the whole. I, I'm surprised they still make a whole lot of money. It's surprising, like right? I mean, like, I don't even know who would you say is has been like a big draw for Playboy. But I mean, I mean the, the other flip of that corner, I mean, look at like the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. Yeah, which just came out uh, two days ago. Yeah. And that, for the most part, I'm not going to say it doesn't at all, but for the most part, it doesn't have nudity in it. Um, well, yeah. You know, I mean, some some of the some of the swimsuits uh, in, in past years have been right. Well, some basically see through. Yeah, I mean, Kate Upton's on the cover. I mean, you can pretty much see most of it. I mean, it, 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 I've always struggled with what do feminists probably think of Playboy or what do they think of like the sports real estate. So I know Kate Upton's come under attack by a lot of people on all on the internet. Like this girl who I think is absolutely beautiful, but she seems to get attacked by a lot of people because they don't think she fits. A lot of them doesn't think she fits the typical. I, I see females on this on social media saying she's not a typical swimsuit model. And then Ashley Graham was a plus size model and they kind of attacked her being on the cover as well. It's just kind of a, I don't know, man. Sexuality—you like can't have it. Yeah, right. Yeah, 
to and, me that like like if they would if it was the other way around they'd attack them for being all thin right. and everything and yeah now that they're choosing people with different body types they they attack that right yeah so, i mean you, you're really damned if you do damned if you don't um i mean i like i this the typical stick figure models i mean i could do without them i mean i you know i show me some curves like kate upton or ashley graham I'm, I'm cool with that but so what do you think of strip clubs strip clubs i'm fine with it i mean uh, uh you know i am a libertarian it, do i see some of the evils in strip clubs i mean yeah well, what sure. evils do you see uh, like, I mean, girls that probably shouldn't be stripping they're only doing it to fuel a drug habit or they're doing it because they can't make money in other ways. I mean, I've we've been me and uh, me and some people on the show used to go frequently, and um, I saw girls taking pills, passing out at tables, you know, uh, getting drunk, and 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 obviously there's some there's something behind that. You meet it. So I was saying, you meet a stripper, you meet a girl with daddy issues all day, and I think certain people are, are guided into that into that lifestyle without really having a plan to get out of it. And that's so, okay. What about prostitution? Uh, if like I'm, red light district, I know, would make Amsterdam. it. I would make it legal. I would make it taxed. I would make it tested. I mean, what? Why? How are you? Like Valentine's Day was just this week. How, when are you not essentially? And I know this is maybe not a hot take, but when are you essentially not paying for sex in in an aspect? Like if you if you meet a girl, you take her out on a date, you you pay for dinner, you take her out somewhere. I mean, you're investing money. And let's be honest, when you're single most guys are looking to hook up with a girl. I mean, that's kind of what it's about, you know. Um, wouldn't it be best if guys could just go and just pay for it straight off the bat and not, you know, if that's what they want? I mean, it, is it... And then you can look at the other side. Yeah, I mean, it's probably not very good for relationships if you uh, constantly, you know, are going to prostitutes. But some people in this world aren't meant for relationships. I mean, what about guys that are socially awkward that, that are never going to meet a girl? Like... This would be their chance to go out and, you know, do whatever. That's me. I mean, what do you think? What's what's your views on prostitution? I don't know. I'm kind of conflicted. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, once again, it goes back to like, if it's a, if it's a situation where you have like a pimp that's pimping women out, mm -hmm. like that's obviously not a good situation. If you have a situation like would legalizing prostitution, uh, you know, make the, Exploitoi ex exploitation yeah, sure. of the sex industry better then yeah if there was evidence to support that i would be like okay that makes sense if it was regulated would it be more open and like you said would you be able to test would you be able to get like the people that were not old enough to make the correct decisions out of it i don't know or yeah. would it make it would it make it worse Man, that's good. Those John, are the questions that I would want to answer i mean john first. you probably come at it a little bit different angle than we do what i mean what are your takes on it I mean, uh, it's, I, I really don't know how to put my thoughts in the words here. Um, that's not good for a podcast. I would yeah, say I know, le right? Legalize <laughs> it, baby. I'm going legalize it. Um, if, legalize if you were to legalize it, you'd have to, it'd have to be strict regulations like across the board. And, uh, it just, to me, it would, uh, it wouldn't keep people who are doing it illegally. It wouldn't keep them from doing it that way either. I don't think it would. It would stop the the negative aspects of it. But don't you think it would cut it down? I mean, drastically. Well, the thing is, is if if they regulated it that yeah. much, they'd have to tax the crap out of it. Well, no, I know. I mean, I'm saying I'm and I'm so, all for being taxed. I mean, you're right. And but so you you've got people that would be charging on the street far less than it would be. So you think essentially the the. The on board prostitution would be such a high cost that people would go underground to get yeah. back to the, well, I mean, it's possible. I guess that you could argue that with <laughs> any case. I mean, drugs or not, but I think it would. I, th I think that's why uh, uh, marijuana is not legal. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I think, I think big tobacco has got a lot to do with that. Honestly, if you want the truth, I think there's a, there's a moral stigma to it, but I think big tobacco doesn't want it to become legal at all. I mean, they would lose a lot of money if, in my opinion, I think uh, if you could buy a pack of cigarettes for six bucks or you could buy a couple of joints for six dollars, I think, and it was legal, I think most people are going to buy the marijuana, you know. So you got to look at like what that would do probably to cigarettes and things like that. So eh, I don't know, man. It's it's tough. There's no um, there's no right or wrong answers, I guess, because we don't know. But 
Uh, we did try in this country to make alcohol illegal, and we say what happened with that uh, didn't work out. So, yeah, once you open, well, the- I, I think the reason why why alcohol is legal is because it's a lot harder to to create a moonshine still than it is to grow marijuana in your basement. Yeah, that's true. Um, let's go. So let's get into, uh, we all know who, uh, well, let's say, I think we all know who Sa- Jerry Sandusky is. Jerry Sandusky was a assistant coach at Penn state, Penn state university. He was uh, molesting children. He was sexually abusing children on campus, uh, on his job. Uh, you know, it's the infamous Joe Paterno allegedly knew about this and didn't really say anything. So they pretty much, uh, <laughs> They ran the man down. He they took away his wins. Joe Paterno, he died. Then they tore down his statue. I think they did, and then they gave him his wins back after he died. Because people love you better when you're dead than you're alive. I hate to say that, but um, um, now his son is facing child sex soliciting charges, and and this is bad because allegedly his son was a victim of the abuse as well. So this becomes into the question of how responsible do you hold these children that were abused themselves and is known to to cycle the abuse for these kids? A lot of them that are, are you know, molested as children or sexually abused as children, uh, some of them will go on to do that to the kids they they get involved with. How responsible should the son be at this point if it's if that would happen to him and it kind of change the way he sees the world should this guy i mean should we throw the book at the guy should we try to rehabilitate the guy where, where do we stand with the, with jerry sandesky's son right now uh, well i mean if it's a issue of like the way he was raised and everything and that's his view of the world then uh uh then changes have to be made to him as a person right and so i mean horrific but how that, do you do that if that if that happens to rehab or or a mental institute whatever has to uh happen then then let that happen but uh um to me i uh, there's 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 judgment and there's righteous judgment right um if you have been in a situation that was bad for you and you still you learn from that and you don't repeat that mm-hmm. to me you have all the right in the world to judge somebody else that has been in that same situation and has not uh, turned their life around. That that continues that because I mean you know how much it sucks. Yeah. And so to me, I mean, and, and there's 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 usually you got people who do exactly like their parents did, yeah. or exactly the opposite. Right. And a lot of that is just does the person possess self awareness? If there, you there's have, no excuse, man. Come on. So no, no, I agree with you. So there's, there's no, no excuse, excuse like, for this. You don't feel sorry for this guy at all for no. the fact that his father abused that, him. You can't. You can't blame your father. My father sexually assaulted children, so I'm gonna do it, and I want to be. Here's here's a, here's a, on a on a no way. slightly more personal note. Dave, how often do you tell your sons that you love them? Uh, all the time. How often did your dad tell you that he loved you? Uh, and the one time that I can oh remember. Oh, God. Here we go with this again. Well, I'm just saying. I think I you it, just triggered Sean David I brought again. it up. I Why brought it would up. you want to bring that up and because trigger David? Dave knew that there was something wrong there, and he made a change. No, dude. We're talking about sexually assaulting small I'm, children, dude. I know. Dude. That's way worse than not saying I love you. It has on nothing to do with Which is worse? Any of it. Like, Which would you rather even... have happen to you? Not told I You're... love you, being sexually molested. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what point are you making here? Like, it's not even sequitur. I'm saying for something that much of a bigger difference, if that made enough of an impact on David's life, where he makes it a point to make sure he doesn't do that, then something big like sexual abuse should be even more so. I mean, you hope, but uh, studies have shown that a that's lot not, of the, that's not studies done. have shown that a lot of these people that were sexually abused as children go on to do it to the next people. In, in so what's the, the solution not sexual here. abuse either? It's, it's, it's also like physical abuse, domestic assault. Domestic assault. That's yes, true. Whole- um, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, when you look at the, the heinousness of crime in this country, what what we view as the worst, you know. Really, pedophilia is like the number one worst crime. Like you can, it's not really murder, if you ask me. I mean, because murder is bad, but I think it's, um, as my professor told me once in college, uh, murder is usually a crime you will commit once and never commit again. 
Okay, that's what he, that's what he told us. So his view was that murderer should only serve like five years in prison, but he was a lefty anyway. But uh, <laughs> but really, when I look at it, I look at do you harm children? Number one, that's that's like we'll never forgive people that that harm children, uh, sexually abuse children. And then it's almost come to the point if you abuse animals, you're almost number two on the list. And then we get down to, you know, uh, rape is pretty bad, you know. Yeah. And then I almost feel murders under that, you know. But those are some of the big four. And can these guys be changed? I, I don't know. A lot of them say they can if you watch documentaries or if you read studies about it. A lot of them say they're never going to change. Like, they just say, this is in me for the rest of my life. All I can do is, it's like alcoholism. Once you're an alcoholic and that's what you've determined you are, you're never going to be free of it. You can stay away from alcohol, but you're always going to be an alcoholic. And they say a lot of these guys are always going to have the urges no matter what. So what do we do with them? I mean, so you're I, saying they're not capable of being rehabilitated. That's uh, your take. Well, the that's thing what is, they say. I don't. I, I. I'm just telling you. When I've watched documentaries and read studies, this is what a lot of them say. I, I have to take them to the word. I have no idea. Well, I mean, uh, I wonder. Um, but there are there are alcoholics that are out there that don't drink. We we've established yeah. that. Um, there are alcoholics that work in bars and don't drink. Yeah, that's that's putting yourself in a bad spot. That'd be like a pedophile mm, working at a school. Not, you know, I mean, I don't know I, I, very I know. many recovering alcoholics that work in a bar. <laughs> probably not a lot. Probably. I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying I guarantee there's somebody out there that fits that description. It's probably because their dad didn't buy them a toy when they were younger or something. But sure. anyway, could be. It's probably just what they do. But anyway, um. So what I'm curious what Lee would do. What 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 would the fine what what is the not fine, what is the way we deal with sex offenders in this country? Is it worth Well, I don't know. I would think like rehabilitation would be the best alternative if it's possible. But if you say it's not possible, then I don't know. I think I think the the, the registration act is a good idea. Yeah, I mean it's the registration act. I mean I used to work in sex offender registration and it was these guys, it was just the same stuff over and over again. You I mean you'd see a guy have a charge of you know sexually assaulting a child in 1992 then 1994 he'd do it again in 1998 he'd do it again and in 2002 and i'm just like how long are these guys staying in prison for like one year i mean you know kids are like my high so i almost think you know you got to put them away like if they're not if it's not fixable then you've got to put away these guys forever and really if, you, if you're a chronic offender i think you got to put them down i mean that's just so Okay. Put yeah. them down. No, I put them down. So 100%. you're pro. I mean, you're you're and you're pro death. Uh yeah. Is that for, what it's called? Chronic capital offenders. capital punishment for crap cap, uh, for repeat offenders. Yeah. One hundred percent. How many? What repeat? Three strikes and you're Three out. Three strikes, you're done, son. Three strikes, we go. We America, baby. We got baseball. Hike Three the, strikes and you're out. Well, there's a reason baseball is such a great sport. <laughs> um, this is the the Steve Harvey family feud, baby. Yeah. No, I mean I don't. Let's it, go for the steal. What is the opposing team? I mean, I say? just I just watched a documentary called. Uh, it was called, I believe. Uh, God, I believe it was something about sex offender park or something, and it was basically where all these sex offenders lived in a uh, like a like a trailer, trailer park. park community, and it was disturbing. I mean, it really was disturbing and. I don't know, man. It kind of bummed me out. So, um, I, some of them guys said they could be changed, and some said no. You know, so I don't know. It's it's tough. I mean, I feel bad for the Sandusky family for having to go through this again. But at the end of the day, I do have to say this man was responsible for his actions, and he has to pay the price. You know, yeah. Just like when you watch the Catch a Predator. I mean, those guys. Come on, man. Like, you know, I, I, I there can't. there had. I mean, it's it's one of two things. There, there's a point where you realize and you're doing something you shouldn't do, and you did it anyway. Yeah. Or worse, you didn't even realize that you were doing something wrong. Right. Then sometimes they don't, I think. I, I think yeah. that in their head, it's not that bad. Like, well, so what? It's a 13-year-old kid. Who cares, you know? Ugh. Anyway, uh, let's lighten up the mood a little bit. Now, each week now, we, we've, we've put it out there to the people. We say, hey, John here. Sometimes people say he doesn't get to talk enough on the show. Yeah, I, whatever. I that's feel, that's I feel, just me I feel on the ra- line. I, I feel if the ratio was 95% me, 5% you guys, that'd be the perfect episode. But the but the listeners disagree, so we've given John his, own, very seg- smart his own segment where people write, fax, email, text, courier pigeon, however they get it to us, they Snicker need net. advice in their life. They run up to us in the streets and tell us these things and – we're going to address those. We got two today from actual listeners in the Dear John segment. So here we go. He's got to open the door. The 
that's my jam. How long are we going to listen to this? All right, <laughs> All right John, go ahead. What, what do you got today? Um, we've got uh, two letters. Do you want me to read them? Yeah, you read them. All right, Lee's going to read them, and John's going to dole out advice. Enjoy. I'm, I'm having problems. You're having what kind I've of I've been problems? having technical problems all night. All right, well, get it together. Let's go. I'm trying. I'm trying. So here we go. This is John. He's going to uh, he's going to help out someone, two people, with their problems. Do okay. It. The first one comes from well, <laughs> Tantalizing Tattoos. She writes, I have recently come into question about a tattoo idea and need some life advice because I'll have this tattoo for the rest of my life. I'm getting three. First one is the semicolon to represent suicide awareness. That'll represent my brother when he passed away. Second one will be an airplane to represent my sister who wanted to grow up and be an aeronautical engineer. Unfortunately, they both passed away in 2000, and I finally came up with these tattoo ideas to do a memory for them. But I wanted another one to represent my life and what I have stood for. I've survived the worst, done the best, and lived life as full as I can, which makes me think the strong person I am today. So should the third tattoo be, quote, the best things in life are always a risk, end quote, or quote, forever and always, end quote. Both would be in the original handwriting of the person who saved my life 12 years ago, but that's another story, LOL. All right. Um, you got, you got, I just want to say before you go, I like the LOL touch. It was a little bit heavy, and then like, well, LOL. It's just it's, <laughs> hey, it's tragedy. It's obviously the person has tragedy. a very good outlook yes. on life. All right, John, sure. go dig it, man. Um, for, for your third tattoo, uh, um, uh, I'd like to throw in a third option, but I'd like to use your own words there. Uh, 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 Lee, what's the line uh, she said about um, uh, survive the worst but done the best? I like that. I've survived the worst, done the best, and live life as full as I can. Just, just that uh, survive the worst, done the best. I think survive that, the worst, done the best, done the best. All right, there you go. I like that. Maybe four tattoos. Maybe four tattoos. Well, I stop at four. So I mean, they say once you. Once you once start, you, once you start, you so can't stop. One person, and we'll leave it. We're going to do this at the end of the show. We've talked about this before. We have new listeners. One person on the show has a tattoo. We're going to let you in the chat determine who that person is, and we'll answer at the end who it actually is. All right. So, um, John, you got another one? Yes. Uh, so, this right. one comes from Here we go. Conundrum to Cosplayer. Dear John, so I've always wanted to go to Comic Con. But I'm a little nervous to go by myself. I want someone to go with me who will dress up and have as much fun as I would. So when I find that person, I have a question. What should I dress up as? Signed. Go ahead. Your biggest and coolest fan ever in the universe of universes. I think that Is that for the whole podcast or just me? I think. But <laughs> just, maybe it's just for you. Just I don't know. It says, you, it says Dear John. It says Dear John. It says Dear John. Okay. Here we go. Um, this ought to be good right here. I, I am a firm believer on in like couples costumes and stuff. So I mean, if you have somebody to go with, uh, have it be in the same genre. If, if you got a guy going with you and you're a girl, go as like Gamora and uh, Star Lord, or Gamora you know, and Star Lord. Yeah, roll you know, it just, out, baby. Just have something that, that Guardians that matches. Yeah, I love Guardians of the Galaxy. I would rather see the Raccoon and Groot personally, but that's just me. If she could pull it off, he or he could pull uh, it off, that'd be amazing. Was your suggestion to someone of all the cosplay in the world, <laughs> Gamora, Gamora and, and Star Lord. Lord? I haven't seen any two people dress up like that. So I mean, you could go as Batman and Robin. You that's could go, been done. Well, yeah, but it's her first one. So uh, I mean, hey, go, go all out. So you're gonna have her go all the first time she ever does it. She's gonna paint herself green from uh, that's head to just toe. An idea. That is hardcore to the wall, dude. Like she's saying, if you're gonna step out, baby, step I'm saying out. If you're going to like the Comic Con in like San Diego, well, let's say it's, let's say it's a local one, a little a small one. She oh, wants I to, probably wouldn't go as hardcore. No, I'd probably no. dollar that a little she, bit. Say she she wants to dip her feet in the small time convention. Let's go oh, with that then, one, then, and then a big one. Then let's, then go with a Black Widow and Steve Rogers. All right, Captain America, as yeah. he's also called. Too much sauce, Steve baby. Rogers. Do you know? Do you <laughs> know the man? Like, you're like, uh, you know, some people call him Captain America, but to me and Steve Rogers, <laughs> me and Steve, we're, we're hanging out, man. Like, okay, so, so just just for the record, green head to toe is too much sauce. Too much sauce. Too much sauce. Okay. These dudes got too much sauce. You know. Um. Who? Okay. Okay. Well, well, there you go, dear John. I'll say this: if you are in, I don't know who this person is, but if you are in this area of town we will gladly go with you as to a cosplay gladly yeah 
Okay. All right. All right. Um, so is that all the Dear Johns? Play them out. Get them all knocked out. Play them out. Play him out. All right. We need a shorter line. Yeah, I think we're good. <laughs> it's almost over. I think we played them out. Yeah. I think we sufficiently I'm out. played them out. <laughs> All right. Um, I do have one more question somebody sent me today. <laughs> okay. Well, you got to make it fast then. Mr. or Mr. We're running up against the clock here. If you could quit your job and money was not an option, uh, today you got enough money to live for the rest of your life comfortably well, What? and you could quit your current job, what new job would you go do tomorrow? Any job. This is for me or everybody? Everybody. Real quick. I would love to be like a, a cartoon voiceoverist. All right. I think that would be so much fun. There you go. Lee? Uh, if I could quit my job and do anything, I would probably, like, I don't need the skills. I mean, you can pick them up. You got money. So, uh, like, you I mean, gotta, but I mean, I would be a professional video game player, of course. Okay. There you go. Without a doubt. And it I, seems like the best. Yeah. There you go. I mean, I would do something like that. I'd either be on radio or I'd do a podcast seven days a week or five days a week and just do this full time. I, mean, I love doing this. So. Right. There you go. I wish. If you want to, if someone's got a million dollars that's listening, hook us up. We could all do all three of those things on the podcast at the same time. So it'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, mine's not that far off. And well, with Lee on Twitch. There you go. Hey. Yeah. Oh, Twitch Lee, so you could do the voiceovers for Lee. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. So uh, we're going to do Blame Yourself right now. Every week, um, we ask our listeners of the program to submit their selfies to us. And the bl- hashtag Blame Your Selfie, this has been going on for a while now. We got. A lot of you in the Blame Your Selfie squad, and every week we get some awesome selfies. So we're gonna we're gonna show some of those selfies on the YouTube's. Like I say, go to youtubecom slash blame your brother. Quite a bit of submissions this week, so we're gonna run through them. And we had some interesting, uh, we had some good ones this week. So uh, last week it ended with Copper Top with the awesome sunglass one. So we're moving on, and the new one, the first one this week, comes know. from our Canadian friend. Let me uh, give me a second here. Give you a, I will stall. Uh, yes, we have someone from Canada here. Okay. And this is, that's Copper Top. So she, that was the last one last week. Well, here we go. This is Mandy O uh, at Cyanide. And she does the Little Geek Gloss podcast. And she was our first Blame Your Selfie of the Week. It says, got some debt payment Oreos and a Blame Your Brother tea that I sent her because I lost a bet about Donald Trump becoming president. So I sent her those Oreos in that shirt. And she says, uh, hashtag blame your selfie, even if it's the weekend. And you can do blame your selfies whenever you want. You can do them seven days a week if you want to. But um, that shirt looks pretty awesome. Go get your shirt at BYBpod.com. You can look as stylish as these people. All right, we're going to go up to the next selfie. So following that up was the one and only Brianna. Brianna. She said I sent her name around the show. I hope it's Brianna. I like Brianna better. What do you like better, Brianna or Brianna, John? Uh, I like both a lot. Okay, I can go either way. I like Bree. Okay, Bree is pretty cool. All right. Bree says, blame yourself if you must. She's on a, uh, a Yoda figurine. It says, uh, BYB Pod waiting for the live stream of your podcast on Thursday. Yoda man. So there you go. Do or do not. I love Bree. She's awesome. So I like the Yoda. There's that guy right there. That's me. That, there's that man. Hashtag that man. That was a Valentine's Day selfie. And I'm wearing a tie because I had a job interview on Tuesday. Was that one? Yeah, that was when it was. Uh, Wait, did Trump like that that uh, Trump White House submission that, that finally kicked in? Power, yeah. He called you up? I, I actually did have an interview with Donald Trump. Um, it went pretty well. I don't well. trust Putzer. I need you, Dave. <laughs> You're going to be huge. You're going to go to China. Okay, so yeah. Wait, so that, we got the best podcasters. The best. So how, were, how was you guys' Valentine's? Great? Yeah. Would you, John, what'd you do? I went to Pigeon Forge with, my, with the wife. All right, Lee. Did you do anything special? Yeah, just a dinner yeah. That's what it is when you get older. All right, uh, we're gonna move up. There was nothing wrong. Now, this is a stu- this is a stunner. Like this, this is copper top. Now this is one of the most amazing selfies I've probably seen in a while. I mean, so it's her. The red hair is like super red. She's got a flower, and those eyes are like I don't even know what's going on with those eyes. Like I don't even know. Like that is that like. That's some Dune stuff right there. That's Dune, yeah. I mean, those eyes. <laughs> Is are she pretty, on the spice? <laughs> I mean, I can see. She said that's why she wears sunglasses. I can see, like, I mean, that's captivating. Really, she's got off a sandworm. What are we talking? I don't know. Those eyes are the. That's the bluest I've ever seen eyes in my life. So, that's pretty amazing. Self, so right top there. three, right there. Right. Uh, I don't. You know, top three, top five. <laughs> hey, hey, top don't forget ten. the key. Can't, yeah. Yeah. Don't forget the key, key. from last week. Uh, learn, what was the key? Don't do top threes. <laughs> don't do top threes. <laughs> 
catching on, guys. I got a top 20 this week. There you go. Uh, all right. Uh, here's and Bri- no specific order. No specific order. <laughs> Maybe. Um, here's Bree once again with the second selfie of the week. It says, eating away my sorrow and annoyance for this stupid holiday called Valentine's Day. And she's eating a cake, which she has smashed in half. And the hair is awesome once again. I dig the hair. I think the hair is awesome. Chocolate she does cake. not like Valentine's no, Day. No, she hates Valentine's Day, where she says if you bring up Valentine's Day, she might kick in the you know what. All right, here's John, who this is like the third submission he tried for this picture. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with John in the Twitter. He He's, he's going to get it slowly but surely. Yeah. But um, as he says, let's try this again. He's in a uh, astronaut suit somehow through the magic of a museum. The or magic something. of Pigeon Forge it says one day Ripley's right. Yes, hashtag blame yourself. Uh, one, the w- Wonderworks. 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 <laughs> okay. Says uh, one day I'll learn this Twitter thing. And John is an astronaut. He's gone to the moon. Everybody. All right. We're gonna keep moving up. Here's Katie with the submission. Here um, says find someone that looks at you like Katie looks at donuts. I love this one. Yeah. I laughed out loud. It's a pretty good one. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it yeah. says hashtag donuts before boys, which is anti um, misogynistic. It's the opposite of whatever that <laughs> but is. But it's the Trudeau effect. That's all. It's just the Trudeau effect. It's fine. Yeah. Um, they're picking tattoos right now. We got one vote for David, one vote for Lee. Okay. Okay. Um, then we got Michael Anthony, who has been having some problems with. He's Twitter. been having some. Been I having sent him some, a message. I did. I sent him a having, message. I feel you, bro. Uh, Send him a message. I don't know if he got that. You know, uh, he says he's having problems getting notifications. He's getting direct message emails. Michael, check your spam folder. Make sure you have. I would delete all of your app permissions. There might be an app that's swallowing your notifications. There you go. E- email Lee. He'll I do- sent you a link. Click on it. Scroll to the bottom. I scroll on that link and it, it came up as a dead link. So okay. seriously, I'm not bad. joking. All right, here's Mandy again with the set. So now we're getting like, I like this. Now we this got is multiple. awesome. We're getting yeah. multiple. We're loving it. Now she's got t-shirts for sale, Little Geek Lost shirts. I've got one. I should probably wear it next week. Uh, shameless self-promotion, hashtag throwback Thursday, hashtag blame your selfie. And those shirts you can get, they're available on her site. Um, and the link's up on Twitter. But go to Little Geek Lost, Google it, and it will come up as well. So there you go. I like those shirts, by yeah, the way. That, I, that, yeah, those are real nice. All right, here's this guy here, Snowflake. Um, snowing somewhere in the world. I believe in you is true. I do. Hashtag blame yourself. This is Lee with uh, the hearts behind him. It says, I believe in you. Where is this at? Nashville. Gra- <laughs> Graffitiville, brother. Okay. I might have tagged that myself. No, I'm not claiming credit. All righty. There you I go. I wish. I'm okay. going to get a tattoo of that, actually. And here, oh, John with the seconds. He's he's figured out Twitter, everybody. It kind says, of. Uh, his picture has like three pixels in it. Yeah, that's true. It says, uh, throwback Thursday way back. It's him, his son, and his wife. It can't be all. Oh, I know. I it can't be that. Way. No, it's it's saying it's an old, old Tommy time, photo. Man. Yeah, right, I get you. Right, right. It's pretty cool. Photo. I like that, man. It's cool. I like the baby with the money bag. All right, here's the coolest selfie of the week. Look at this. That's my new car. I just got it today. Yeah, right. I, it's, it's outside. It's just that David's number one pick. It's, it's outside. <laughs> For <laughs> selfies. Says, this is number one, yeah, two, actually, and three. Yeah. Don't tell anyone that I'm Batman because that looks like the freaking Batmobile off of uh, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight. That thing was tight in person. That's a uh, BMW, electric BMW. See that? Yeah, it's pretty tight. So um, there's Sammy's submission. It's me, Lee, and Sammy hanging out at Bailey's Sports Bar and Grill. And we had a blast. So that was all three of us. Uh, Sammy's throwing up the shocker. Had a blast. Thanks again. Maybe next time John will be there. There you go. <laughs> Miss you, bro. We'd like to get him on the show sometime. All right. So um, I don't know what's going on with Bailey, but that's it. That's all our selfies of the week. So, guys, that's awesome. You keep submitting those. They're fantastic. My favorite one of the week. I mean, if I'm going to give honestly, if, oh, I, if I'm go. thinking oh, of it, boy. and I really well, we told you not to, I'm going to step you up and listen to there's, the there's one that really stood out. You know, when I look at them, it was mine. Mine was obviously <laughs> the best of the week. It was the best. So there we go. All right. So that's the blame your selfie. Now, also every week, we try to impart some, you know, it wouldn't be enough if we discussed the news, we showed you selfies, we apologize, we're giving you facts about African American history, man. We're doing it all, but we also, John and Lee, are going to together give you life advice in a little segment called the Major Key Segment. So let me give you a major key. Where is the key? This is not the key. I want the key. Give us the keys. So let me give you a major key. And you really do have the key. Everybody, I mean, everybody stand up right now. Everybody. I got, I got the keys now. All right, major key time. Now, I'm just going to read some of that stand out while they think of what their major key is. Uh, as, as we've looked back in the past, here's some right here. Um, 
don't name someone based on the color of their skin from episode 14. Episode 15, don't be Hitler for Halloween. Uh, <laughs> a lot of don'ts. Maybe we should incorporate some do's. Episode 20 is not a posse. It is an entourage. 21, the bedroom is your holy temple. 22, rest in peace, Harambe. Uh, don't be a snowflake. Empire is the best Star Wars film. Don't have top three. So those are some of our past major keys, but... John Lee, you got to get together, man. What I don't know. The, I don't even know what we talked about. I think uh, I'm, my leading thought is probably in uh, honor of uh, Sir Frederick Douglass and uh, just uh, say that uh, it's better to agitate, agitate than be stagnant. Ooh, I like that. I'm digging that one, man. That is that is my, like, I might get. I think something like, I think it was more like throw a pee at the dinner guest eye or something. What was it? What? If you, if you can't what? sit down and yell at the guy at dinner, then go home oh that's my something? quote we're yeah. trying to get frederick Douglass involved here you're pointing it back to the white man on black history month what <laughs> yeah. is wrong think, with you i think man? leo's an apology yeah, next yours week an apology next i said week we should keep it. turning this holiday around back to the white man you're the whitest snowflake in the history of the world <laughs> all right so what are you going with what's your major key give it to me come on john i obviously have no control over this say it john say it again agitation is better than being stagnant there you go. All right, so that's your major key of the week. The keys. So let me give you a major key. And you really do have the key. Everybody, I mean, everybody stand up right now. Everybody. All right. I got, I got the keys, y'all. Agitation is better than stagnation. There we go. So there we go. That's our uh, major key of the week, guys. We've come to the end of another awesome episode. Hopefully you learned a little bit, thought a little bit, all kinds of good stuff. So... What we are going to tell you right now is you need to go to BYBpod.com. You need to pr- make all your purchases through Amazon using our link on that site. That helps the show financially. does not cost you any extra money. You guys have been doing it. We really appreciate it. It's awesome. You've also been spreading this sh- the word about the show to people because the numbers have been up over the last two weeks. We can't say thank you enough. It's it's really it's awesome to come together and talk and when seeing you guys, but when we really see more people are listening and getting involved, it really... I don't know. It's just really awesome. So really, really appreciate that. Just to, to piggyback on what Dave's saying, I am a fan of our fans. Mm-hmm. You guys are just amazing. Yeah. So just tell your friends about it. Re- retweet the tweets. You know, Share the Facebook post because one of your friends may retweet that to 12 other people, 12 to 100 to 1,000. So it just keeps going. So, all right. So there we go. Yeah, BYBpod.com. That's the website. That gets you everything you need to know. I don't know what Lee's doing. He's flailing around like his hands here. And... um you know, on there, they got the links to iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, however you want to listen to the show. Uh, RadioVegas.rocks link is there. If you want to get a t-shirt, do it. Be stylish. Get out there. Show the world you love the podcast. We've got t-shirts for sale. They're awesome. They're great quality shirts. Everybody's loved them and has them so far. And I believe we've got some more orders going out this week. So that is awesome. Now, we did ask, who has the tattoo? Now, the the it seems the overwhelming majority of people think i have the tattoo for ten thousand dollars that could be true for ten thousand it could be true but actually it's not true i have no tattoos lee no tattoos john has the tattoo john tell him what the tattoo is i have a tattoo of a dragon on my right shoulder blade yep let's see it show it for the camera baby Right now. I don't think they want to see all that. <laughs> oh, John said he is, uh, he's tapping out on that request. So, so John is the one that had the tattoo, just in case, you know, you were wondering. So, all right, guys, uh, we really appreciate you listening. Like I say, uh, go to iTunes, leave a five star rating and review, subscribe, uh, get on every Thursday at 8 p.m., get on youtube.com slash blame your brother. And, uh, we probably will be doing a after show. So we'll try to figure out who wants to call in and talk to us. We'll, uh, the the theme of the after show has been attack lee which i love that but we'll see if that continues on but for now tell your friends about the show thanks so much for listening and uh i guess what else can we say lee do you have anything else don't blame yourself when you can blame your brother start it <laughs>